Happy Sunday, everybody. Welcome to another episode of Elon's Matchup Maximizer, presented by Keeping Carlson, a podcast where I, Elon Dubrovsky, take a look at next week's NHL schedule, try to find the teams that are playing on the off days so that you could stream in players from those teams and hopefully get the edge in your head-to-head matchups. Apologies for taking the week off last week. It was busy. It was the holidays. Kind of like lost track of time. And next thing I knew, I was like, oh yeah, I forgot to do Matchup Maximizer. But here we are. We're back. And the next week is going to be like an odd one for sure it's like your typical tuesday thursday saturday super busy days and i mean like super busy days we've got 26 26 and 24 teams playing on tuesday thursday and saturday and then very sparse for the four other days one game on monday just vegas versus seattle then two games on wednesday three games on friday and four games on saturday so it ascends but yeah definitely those are the days you're going to want to target because if you set your rosters you're likely going to see that you might already be full on the Tuesday, Thursday, Saturday, but actually maybe not. I looked at my uh, couple team and I saw that I had a couple openings on a couple of those days, namely because I have uh, an Anaheim Duck and I have a Washington Capital and both of those teams are our like best schedules of playing on light days. That opened some things up. Uh, so we'll get to that in just a sec. Uh, I'm recording this on Saturday night at around 7.18. So there's a lot of Saturday games that I'm not going to catch, but I'm going to be going out to meet up with a friend after. We're going to have some drinks and I don't really want to come back and try to record this while I've uh, knocked a few back. So I think that uh, we'll still be able to have some gems here, even if we don't have the most up-to-date data. Uh, I already also recorded a podcast earlier today, a crossover with the Fantasy Hockey Life people, uh, Victor and Jesse, and also Lewis from Short Shifts. And the three of us did a really fun draft. I believe that part one is going to be released on the Fantasy Hockey Life feed like tonight on Saturday. And then we're going to release our second half of the draft uh, tomorrow. So make sure, of course, that you're subscribed to Keeping Carlson, where you got this podcast. You'll also get that one. Oh, you'll want to listen to the Fantasy Hockey Life one first. Okay, let's dive into uh, our best streaming schedules for next week. And yeah, there's two of them. There's the Anaheim Ducks. They play Wednesday, Friday, Sunday, straight up three off day games. Then you've got the Washington Capitals. Maybe better if you have room on Tuesday because they go Tuesday and then Wednesday, Friday, Sunday. So of course, you're going to want to check to see if you could fit in a Tuesday game from a streamer on Washington. Then yeah, you're definitely going to be happy to get a player from that team. So let's take a look. And Washington is a team a bit in flux, which maybe makes things a little bit difficult uh, because Max Pacioretty isn't back today for the game against uh, the Nashville Predators, which has just started. It's already one nothing Nashville. I'm seeing, ooh, who scored? Evangelista from Fabro and Novak. Well, that's kind of boring. I have Philip Forsberg. Let's go, guy. But okay, so the Caps uh, are, you know, going to have new lines probably. But taking a look for what it's worth at the lines today, they've got Strom, Ovechkin, and Kuznetsov. So Kuznetsov moving to the wing. And then McMichael, uh, Mantha, and Protas as the second line. So I would imagine, this is just a guess, and we'll see how today goes. If Washington gets blown up again, they try something else. This is already a new set. Um, uh, but maybe we could just assume Pacioretty goes to the left wing on that second line. And then he'll also get the top power play, which means that I guess we've got a pretty good spot for Evgeny Kuznetsov. This is a guy who's been like absolutely brutal. There's not really much you can say about Kuznetsov, just uh, that he used to be really good, and now he's playing on the top line. I'm looking at his couple uh, average points per game over the last couple of weeks. 0.46. I've never seen such a low. That's like, he's had so many zeros, a couple ones, a 0.5, a 0.25. Like we're talking like barely any shots at all. Like maybe a hit and not even made, like one hit over the last couple of weeks, one block and yeah, no points. So Kuznetsov is totally cold. But if he's on the top line, I mean, it would be a reach, but maybe it would be worth it for you. If you're in not a cupful league uh, and Max Pacioretty isn't stashed, now is definitely a time to give him a shot. Who knows like how he'll be when he returns from injury. He could be like a shell of his former self, or he could be like Patrick Kane. Uh, so I would definitely jump on Pacioretty, only 28% rostered on Yahoo. And uh, probably though my... Well, no, so Pacioretty would be my top streamer, but I'm not going to count him because he's rostered in all the cupful divisions since, you know, probably people just stashed him when they had the chance. Uh, Dylan Strom, though, he's probably the one I would take. He was off 
off the top line for a bit, but he's had at least some moderate success for this Capitals team, which has been pretty cold lately. Uh, only 26% rostered on Yahoo. I've seen him dropped in a couple couple divisions after being on a bit of a cold streak. Uh, so now would be a time to get back on. He was on a huge hot streak, right? He had points in six straight games, and now he's uh, pointless in three. We'll see how he does today against the Preds and Askarov. Cool to see him in the net uh, today. But yeah, I think that Dylan Strom is a clearly great streamer. Like the, the, pro, the point of this show is like the player has to be available. Usually player on a super hot streak <laughs> that also has a big name wouldn't be available. So, you know, you're taking a bit of a risk here on a guy on a cold streak, but definitely he's in a good spot. He's had success in the past and you've got these three off day games. So I think that's your clear top pick. Uh, I'll throw out a name for you if you're in a super deep league. Ethan Bear is playing his first game of the season today after signing with the Caps uh, earlier in the week. So... I don't know if you need defense. Like apparently he had really good underlying numbers when he was in Vancouver. Who knows, right? I would take Erasmus Sandin over Ethan Bear. But if you're in a league where Erasmus Sandin is rostered and you want to find a defenseman, let's say like you don't have any, you know, forward spots open on Tuesday, but you have a D spot open, maybe try Ethan Bear. I'd probably check and see how today's game turns out for him. It's a very deep cut. I'm not that into him to be honest, but I want to throw it out there. All right, so that's the Caps. Uh, Next up, though, we can go to the Anaheim Ducks, another team that's like a little bit in flux right now because Troy Terry is injured. So this team, you know, they get a bunch of players back, but then they lose players. They, you know, they got Zegers back, they got McTavish back, Drysdale, but now they've lost Leo Carlson and Troy Terry over the last couple of weeks. Terry is like just day to day, so hopefully it won't be, you know, too long of an absence. But in the meantime... The Lions in practice today, and the Ducks are playing on Sunday also, so you can grab yourself a Sunday savior, someone who's going to help you win your week, hopefully, if the Ducks can score a goal. They did in their last game. Uh, But yeah, you'll get a Sunday game, and then after that, you'll get a Wednesday, Friday, Saturday for next week. Like I said, three home games against Toronto, Winnipeg, and Detroit. So uh, Winnipeg's always a tough team to score against when Hellebuck's in net. Uh, Toronto, Detroit, maybe they can put some pucks in. Uh, So yeah, the Lions today, Zegris, Ryan Strom, and Max Jones uh vetrano mctavish and killorn i'm not sure if i'm like happy or sad about this as someone with killorn because uh would we consider the zegris line the top line or would we consider this uh line with, like it, that used to be like the best line for a lot of the season the one with mctavish and vetrano and they were playing with strom so now killorn is there uh, and then you got henrik in the bottom six he's been doing some stuff recently we also got some power plays units uh practice today so we got those lines also i'm looking at gamedaytweets.com of course uh killorn zegris Carrick, McTavish, and Drysdale on one power play, and then Silverberg, Strom, Henrique, Vetrano, and Fowler. Pretty surprising to see like Sam Carrick there, or not Vetrano on the top power play, but I guess they're trying something. We'll see if it works. They didn't score any goals in the last game, like I said, against Arizona, so might as well try something. So that'll be interesting to see how it shakes out. Okay, as far as streamers go, like uh, Mason McTavish is only rostered in 54% of Yahoo leagues. I would definitely grab him if you can, but you probably can't. Zegris is rostered in only 42% of Yahoo leagues. Another guy, it's like, if you could get him, sure. I'm I'm sure you can't. Those are the clear top two. As far as players that you might actually be able to get, um, like Jamie Drysdale, if he's quarterbacking what I guess is the top power play, uh, then that's, I guess, a good spot. And Drysdale had a goal a couple games ago against Vegas. Obviously nothing in this last game, but he did take three shots. He's had three shots in each of his last couple games. So I'm not mad at that. Normally I don't like jump to the defenseman here first, but I think you definitely want to look at Jamie Drysdale if he's available. And then yeah, Alex Killor, and I'll throw him out there. Like he's on a line, like top six. I don't know if you want to call it top line, but it looks like two even lines and then top power play. If you want to call it that, I think it is. Uh, So, yeah, I think that Alex Killorn is definitely a decent stream. He looked a lot better, I think, when he was with Terry and Zegras. I like that line a little bit better than, uh, well, with McTavish and Vetrano, though, could be really good, too. So, Alex Killorn, he would probably be my streamer of, well, no, I guess I'll go Strom, Dylan Strom first, and then Alex Killorn would be my top two streamers right now. And then, but also Jamie Drysdale, especially if, you know, you are short on D, like it doesn't doesn't matter for this week because it's all off day games, but, you know, maybe the following week you'll have a day where, it'll you'd be able to fit the anaheim guy in and, and dryzo could be a hold it depends how deep your league is could be tough but yeah i want to throw him out there adam henrique like was hot for a stretch now he's gone cold and he's adam henrique so like i'm definitely leaning to the the cold lasting like it was a stretch of like a lot of goals on not that many shots and so you know how that goes like it's not going to keep up like he had a goal on a game where he had two shots then a hat trick where he had four shots and he had a goal on two shots and a goal on one shot so yeah he was just having a stretch where every shot he took was going in the net that's obviously not going to happen for long so he would be after the other guys that i said for me but it's definitely possible and then i guess i'll mention even ryan strome you know 
could he could do something but he'd be super low for me but those would be the guys on anaheim to target but yeah i guess uh yeah like i said killorn and, and drysdale uh, jump out to me as guys that i would get if uh, but of course uh, uh mctavish zegris vetrano uh, would be uh, also really good guys to get, but they're probably not available to you. So, okay, those are the clear top two schedules of the week because of the off-day games. Uh, there's still a couple others I'll throw at you. Uh, let's take a quick break. We'll be back in a sec. Welcome back to the Matchup Maximizer podcast. Having a lot of fun here chatting about next week's schedule. Uh, because I have that draft podcast uh, that, I, like I mentioned, I already recorded and we're going to be releasing tomorrow. We don't have a regular episode of Keeping Carlson. Uh, so I'll just sort of quit, you know, before I, I dive in back into the schedules, a few quick news and notes that I'll throw at you just so that, you know, if you can't wait till short shifts. Um, so Zach Wierenski is hurt. Look for a, a Provorov potentially on Columbus it is going to be probably getting extra power play time there. Philip Gustafsson on Minnesota was hurt today so uh, Marc-Andre Fleury might be someone you want to jump on if you want a goalie there's actually a few goalie injuries that you might be able to take advantage of here uh, also Charlie Lindgren is hurt so we'll see if Kemper had been dropped in your league because Lindgren was taking a lot of his starts that's another one that you maybe want to go after and then not like goalie injuries but there are some other goalie situations that I think are interesting right now Brian and I actually dove into a bunch of them on a patron cast we recorded that a couple days ago now yeah, was it Friday night or Thursday? I don't know. What's time right now during the holidays? I've been off all this whole week and I, I'm having trouble keeping track of what the days are. Uh, but uh, we recorded a patron cast. It was really fun. If you're a patron keeping Carlson, I check it out. Uh, it's free as part of being a patron. Just uh, message me if you don't know how to find it. If you're not a patron, you could sign up and then you, you get that content. Uh, but a couple of quick ones I'll throw at you. Uh, Joel Hofer has been looking good on St. Louis. I wonder if he's going to start stealing some starts. So St. Louis doesn't have a great schedule next week. So maybe you wait on him. Uh, Alex Lyon is back for Detroit got a win today he's already scheduled to play tomorrow against boston i think for as long as Huso is out hope uh alex lyon is probably going to get a lot of starts for you and then also on new jersey let's see how vanacek does today but nico dawes has come in and he's looked good as well so just some some goalies for you to consider and uh, maybe uh, one of them could end up turning into a hold. I added Alex Lyon and Hofer myself. I'm planning on dropping Hofer after tonight because of that week's schedule next week. Okay, anyways, back to the uh, regularly scheduled content here on Matchup Maximizer. I've given you the teams that have three light day games. How about teams that have two light day games and also four games overall? That's not so bad, right? Let's go to the Chicago Blackhawks. They play Tuesday, Thursday, and then Friday, Sunday. So you're going to get that late week uh, stream for sure with those two games. And then maybe if you could fit a Tuesday or a Thursday, then that becomes pretty good. Then you're getting three games just like uh, the other teams that I mentioned. So definitely check your lineups. That's always the rule, right? You got to listen to this podcast. But first, you got to check your lineups and actually see which days you have availabilities. And yeah, over on Chicago... I mean, you know how it goes. Kurashev is probably your best bet. He, in the last game, was on the line with uh, Connor Bedard and Nick Foligno. So Kurashev is also, you know, generally on the top power play with Bedard. Uh, in the last game, Nick Foligno was also there. So if Kurashev is not available for you, I would definitely also look at Foligno, who had a two-goal game a little while ago. He's been a little quiet since, uh, but he's good for hits, at least. So... You know, you get that as a floor if that's counted in your league. Uh, but yeah, then otherwise, you just want the guy with the exposure to Connor Bedard. So yeah, it's Kershev first, then Felino. I think it's pretty straightforward here. Uh, I'm not, And then also, Seth Jones is injured. So Kevin Korchinski has been on the top power play. He's had a very quiet rookie season so far, only 19 years old. But hey, he just had a power play assist in his last game uh, against Dallas. So maybe that is the start of something. It's possible, right? Chicago scored four goals in that game. Uh, so if you need a defenseman, like, again, kind of like what I said about Washington, but even more clear because it's Tuesday and Thursday. If you can't, like, let's say you have only openings for defense on Tuesday and Thursday, you're going to get four games out of the top power play guy playing with Bedard, assuming that holds. I'd imagine it will. Uh, because like Alex Vlasic was playing second power play. So yeah, Korchinski is definitely a deep cut that I would consider maybe a top defensive streamer of the week if you want to get four games. And you can fit him, obviously, on Tuesday and Thursday. Um, so, okay, so that's one of the teams that plays two times on off days and four times overall. The other is the Winnipeg Jets, who just had a nice win today against Minnesota, though it wasn't so nice for me, like clawing away my couple matchup because none of the goals came from the top line. Like Nikolai Ehlers, super quiet, even though he took four shots. Uh, the power play wasn't clicking. Apparently Ehlers and Shifley traded spots. Um, 
So anyway, I'll mention, like always, Velarde if he's available. He's probably not available to you anymore. So I don't think I have to mention him. Aside from Velarde and Ehlers and, and of course, Shifley, like Winnipeg definitely is like, you know, it gets a little hard to stream players in after that. Uh, I think we've talked about them before on this podcast. But I guess like today, the big star was Nino Niederreiter. He had two goals on five shots. He continues to like produce pretty well even though he's not getting the uh, prime role here, not getting the top power play. So I think Nino would be definitely my pick here. Like, even though Alex Iafalo gets more power play time, I would look at Nino uh, as a pretty solid pick. Did I say the days, by the way? They're also the same as Chicago. Tuesday, Thursday, Friday, Sunday for uh, the Winnipeg Jets. So I think Nino Niederreiter is a clear guy to go after. You could also go after Cole Perfetti. Somehow no points today, but he did take six shots. So that's always promising. You'd imagine generally if you if a player takes six shots, like one or maybe even two is going to go in. So I think those are your clear like top streamers before I'd even go for Ayafalo, who did score today, does play a lot of minutes, but he's just not someone I really want to bank on for points. Uh, so if it's in a super deep league, maybe you look at Ayafalo. And then I guess the on the D side, yeah, go, I don't know, go for Neil Pionk. If, you know, if your league has peripherals, again, if like you only have D spots open on Tuesday, Thursday, you get four games out of Neil Pionk, could be worse. Could be better, of course. Um, I might take Korchinski over Piog just because the power play opportunity. It depends. That's a ceiling versus floor, of course. So I don't even know how high Korchinski's ceiling is. He has his first assistant forever today. Uh, but yeah, Nino Niederreiter, definitely. He runs a bit hot and cold, but I think in four games today and like two that you're for sure going to fit in, hopefully if you could fit in a third, I'd imagine he's going to score at least a goal, maybe get you an assist also. So not, not too bad for a streamer for sure. Uh, so yeah, then I guess what's left, I could tell you that the Calgary Flames also play four times. Uh, that's the only other team, only Calgary and then Chicago, Washington and Winnipeg play four times this week. Calgary, it's three busy days and only the one off day. They play Tuesday, Thursday, Saturday, and then you got the Sunday against Chicago. Um, but it is worth noting, I've mentioned this, I feel like on a couple of podcasts, now, I mentioned on the draft podcast we recorded earlier today and on the patron cast, that the Flames have been trying out some new lines, apparently. And I'm kind of interested to see how things will go with Huberdo uh, back on the top line with Lindholm and Sharon Govich. That's been a, you know... Those two guys are decent. Like Sharon Govich has been on a great hot streak. It's kind of crazy that we're at a point where we're saying like, I'm interested potentially in Huberdo because of his exposure to Sharon Govich and not the other way around. Uh, but like Huberdo is super cold. He's like pointless in 11 games or something. He's on the biggest cold streak. Like I, he's not going to be pointless for the rest of the year, right? Like how long is this cold streak going to go? Maybe uh, tomorrow, Sunday, maybe is the first day <laughs> of uh, Huberdo breaking the cold streak. And then next week with four games. Maybe this is a wild take, but I like Huberdo as a stream for next week. I guess I can't really call him my streamer of the week because it's like three busy days. You might not even be able to fit him in until Sunday. But I just want to kind of plant a flag there and say that I'm curious to see what Huberdo can do. And then if you have openings, like also uh, Connor Zari has been like pretty solid and he plays on the line with Kadri and he's also gets a lot of power play time. So Connor Zari, probably like the better pick than Huberdo, but I just, you know, have a hunch. What can I say? I think that uh, Huberdo might do something. That guy, man, worst contract of all time. I think Brian and I debated that at some point. Um, anyway, that's it, right? And then after that, like, I guess you can go the other way. There's a lot of teams that only play Tuesday, Thursday, Saturday. So if you have players on, I mean, I don't even need to name them all. There's like so many of them, right? So like, take a look at the schedule. I have one uh, at keepingcarlson.com slash tools. I have a spreadsheet there. Lots of different uh, places where you can get the schedule, of course. Um, yeah, make sure if you have a guy that's going to be on your bench for all three days, then you're going to have to consider dropping. Then there's even some teams that only play twice. Uh, like St. Louis is just Thursday, Saturday. I just dropped today to Corey Krug, even though he plays today, I dropped Krug to bring in Tage Thompson out of my IR. It'll be really frustrating if it turns out that like Krug outpoints Thompson. Uh, I do see. Oh, nice. Okay, since I've been recording, Thompson got an assist on the overtime winner from Jeff Skinner. So at least I got something there. Uh, Tory Krug is on the top power play in St. Louis. Justin Falk is even injured, so it's like not even like a, a little bit of a risk that he'll lose that in the in the short term. But Krug's been so cold that I think, especially with this bad schedule next week, you could probably drop him and probably most people on St. Louis, aside from like your obvious studs, uh, there's no reason to hold like a Brandon Saad or, you know, whatever, Kevin Hayes, if you have someone like that, even like maybe you could go a little bit higher, uh, depending on how deep your league is. Uh, also Edmonton, only two games, both on uh, the busy days. So if you have like a Warren Fogle or something, obviously now's going to be a time to drop one of them. Uh, Sabres, Thursday, Saturday, that's a tough one, actually, because if you have someone like uh, Quinn, like he's been pretty great 
uh, in his short time back. He scored another goal today, uh, Jack Quinn. And, and uh, But yeah, you'd have to wait all the way till Thursday. But I'd have trouble dropping Jack Quinn. Um, but uh, And then Thursday's against Montreal. Like maybe he'll be able to get something against them. So that's a tough one. Paterka also. Yeah. So Buffalo is a little bit of a tough choice. I don't want to be here telling you to like drop like these good players. But if, if you don't think, if you set your lines on like Thursday, Saturday, you wouldn't even have Jack Quinn in there, then I guess there's no point holding him. Um, but that's a decision for you to make. I uh, hope you enjoyed this rendition of the matchup maximizer. It was fun to uh, get back on this. I, I don't see a reason why I won't keep doing this now f- till the end of the season. I just had that one holiday episode. I took a small vacation, but yeah, I think we're going to be going strong all the way to the end. Uh, good luck in your matchups next week. Uh, definitely check out this really fun one player per team draft episode that like i said i recorded with fantasy hockey life so that maybe is already in the fantasy hockey life feed by the time you listen to this or if not it'll be there soon and then we'll be dropping part two in our keeping carlson feed tomorrow so yes that's all i have to say we'll we'll be back also with of course some short shifts episodes next week and brian and i will do a regular old mega show next sunday which i guess will be the first time in a while because i also had that really fun interview with daniel negranu uh, a week ago which definitely check out if you didn't listen to that it was a really fun time for me and i think daniel really delivered i think we had a really great show so just subscribe to keeping carlson and listen to everything we do that's all i ask from from you right (laughs) i think it's good i guess i'm a little biased uh so good luck with the rest of your matchups good luck next week we'll talk to you next saturday for some more streaming tips see ya Yeah.